But I'm going to give each of the commissioners an opportunity to say something closing. Okay. Larry, would you like to say something? Yes, I turned down the pizza because I didn't want to report it as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have nothing more to add. I mean, I've heard everything today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I stayed, I stayed alert for 12 hours. <laughs> you did indeed. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the people that are still watching. Yeah. Neil? Yeah, uh, mahalo to everybody who's, who's been a part of this today. Uh, Don, your, your grace in accepting and receiving uh, really pointed criticism is remarkable and only matched by your persistence in doing something really stupid. Um, I, it feels, I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's in the car ready to drive down a busy street and I, you're going to hit, you're going to hit somebody. You're going to hit somebody. They're going to get hurt. I don't know whether to yank you from the, the from the driver's seat or flat the tire of the car, uh, but that's what I see. This is not, we're headed in a really bad direction. Uh, so I, I know if I try to offer right now a motion to put agendize, to support Kaleo's re, re, uh, reappointment, agendize that, AG will say no, because they've taken a position that this is your, yours to deal with. And until that's resolved in the courts, that's not gonna go anywhere. But, I, but what I think I can do, what I think I can do legitimately is we have an agenda. We're going to meet on Maui next month. I don't know what the agenda item is, but you need to explain. Somebody needs to explain how we're going to rebuild, restore trust with that community. That needs to be on the agenda. What's your plan to drive down this street and not hit anybody, you know, uh, let alone be headed in the right direction? For our community, I you, you know, when I think of when, but the evolution in my time, it might be 50 years next year, working in this Hawaiian community and to see the change in, uh, you know, the staunchness and the, and the engagement, it's just like light years, mm -hmm. light years how we've grown. I was really proud, proud to be a part of this. Uh, but when I think of, when I crystallize that, uh, that spirit, I... Uh, I found of a quote of Frederick Douglass fighting for the abolition of slavery in 1857. I just shared this with another group. He said, if there's no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and deprecate and yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the roar of its waters. The struggle may be a moral one or maybe a physical one, and it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. Find out just what any people will quietly submit to, and you found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them, and these will continue until they are resisted. Our people are past the point of resistance. So expect it. They're fueled by that spirit. Anything less would be accepting injustice. Anything less would be walking backward and losing the progress we've made. They're not going to let it happen. Well, let's do the right thing. Collecting my thoughts. So, sure. Um, you know, I uh, got this job in July of uh, 2021, I think. And shortly after that, we had the Red Hill in November. And it was um, <clears throat> Department of Health right away, day two of the incident said, don't drink the water. And, uh, and people, um, uh, the Navy that day said, the water is safe to drink. So I recognize uh, the value of water, but I also recognize we issued a emergency order to shut down Red Hill, but it was the collective voices of the people of the state of Hawaii that came together that really solidified the, sh the closing of Red Hill. And so I applaud you for that. I mean, that it is the collective voices of everyone coming together for a single um, 
a single flashpoint, a single, uh, in this case, there were four, four flashpoints, but uh, people coming together to, to, as a unity to bring your voices to the public, to the, to the body, um, to help us make decisions. And I also really respect you, Don, for <laughs> um, carrying that burden. Um, and it is a heavy burden, I know, uh, because I have taken, you know, I've, I've had to take decisions against my employees as well. And it is on, it's not a, it's not a difficult uh, task. Um, and I know that it's, uh, and it's just, you know, it is, it is a tremendous burden on you and you, and I know you're going to do the right thing in the end. Uh, so thank you everybody for coming and for uh, sharing. Okay. <clears throat> Coffee. I'll, I'll just keep this up and I want to share those germs. Um, I think I appreciate all the perspectives from the testimony today. You know, I've been experiencing it through my own window, um, but it's in three, four, multiple dimensions now. And it's clear that there's things, there's been a lot of pressure on you, Church Hang. But as Dr. Sher pointed out, there's also this preceded you and I and and the whole incident took me back multiple times to the Lahaina designation hearing and and so coming out of this today I think there's a couple things that I understand need to be done um I'm sorry I forgot your name there are lots of names today but but the social media aspect and the things that I'm not aware of my students yesterday were explaining TikTok to me and it, it's <laughs> It, it, it sort of is, I'm still wrapping my head around it, but, but just how much certain messages travel and how information is so different than how I gather it than how you guys understand it, you know? Um, and yet that's the reality that so many people live in is through that. Um, and so if it's feeding where I'm getting to is I get now that my silence is not okay because if something were to ever happen to Khalil, that's blood on my hands. And so I'm feeling motivated to write a public statement of support. Um, I think it would be stronger coming from a commission and it, we don't need to necessarily <coughs> talk about the personnel issues, but I am feeling highly motivated to explain also the work of the commission and why he was instrumental for that progress. And he set new bars for what commissions could and should do in terms of upholding water code. The other thing I'm thinking about too, thank you, Dr. Scheuer, um, is that whisper network, you know, another <laughs> way that information gets out. And if you are in PRP or the Carpenters Union, that is your reality. That designation equals a housing moratorium, that we need housing more than ever. And I don't know how to engage that conversation, but I would be very, very interested in engaging directly with, um, I think specifically, I think it's PRP or Carpenters Union, but like understanding what are the anxieties and let's address those because, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a zero sum game. Um, and I think especially Lahaina forces us to see that that's, that's not true. But, you know, other than saying it's not true, like, well, then how do we make it not true? How do we address those concerns that, you know, the so many people I'm learning this on Maui, you know, are contractors. And so they do rely on that income stream. So if we aren't building, then, you know, what are they doing? What are their job opportunities? Window washing at the hotels? Like, you know, what, how do we address the economics? And so it comes back to, there are these, sorry, I'm going to get academic, but there's this idea that modes of, there are three modes of governance. It's an oversimplification, but there's the bureaucracies that we are existing, but there's also the market. I hate economics, I don't like to think about it, but the reality is it has a lot of power and the housing market is definitely interacting with our water situations, especially on Maui, but also Kona. And then there's civil society and there's this, it's, it's sort of a triad and I had the privilege of sort of speaking at the West Maui speaker series on Zoom back in April, but it's, um, it's clear it's lopsided. You know, it's, it's the idea is a three-legged stool of the state or the bureaucracies, the market and civil society. And what we see is civil society coming up 
to rebalance things, but you know, it also requires action on all of these other modes of government and coordination. So how do we take some of those ideas and really actualize them to help us solve our problems? I'm, um, I'm deeply interested in seeing how to make that happen. I'll think more about it on how we can um, engage or ask around on, on how we can engage this sort of housing water conversation and get past these either or binaries um, because it's harming people who have been harmed. So thank you for the opportunity to sort of share that, put ideas out. Maybe other people will have better ideas and help us move the needle there. This is not easy. I cannot even begin to imagine how Kaleo feels. I cannot. Uh, let me let me just address several things. One. Um, It has never been CWIRM's, it has never been CWIRM's intention or directives to in any way blame the Kahlo farmers for the fire. That is, that came out as a civil beat article in light of the correspondence that was going. But that has never been a narrative that we at CWIRM have ever supported or advocated. We continue to support the, um, the IIFS with, and Proclamation 7, I will tell you in a conversation with Kathy Hull, um, clearly we could see the division in the Hawaiian community about that, um, the suspension of 174C, <clears throat> the suspension of the IIFS, the threat of the West Maui designation being withdrawn created a tremendous amount of tension, contention, fear, anxiety. Everything that was said here was at threat with so long as that suspension was, um, was in place. Um, and through a conversation with Kathy Ho about how do we address this? Like, um, I approached the governor and I said, continuing to suspend 174C is only gonna divide the Hawaiian community soon after the BBC met. So I said, um, I would urge you to consider unsuspending that. And fortunately he did. Um, you know, um, my determination to redeploy Kaleo was not a unilateral decision. That was a request I had received from the Attorney General's office based upon an investigation. But I made that determination, not the commission. I did not confer with the commission. I did not confer with anybody else. I've told Laura Ka'akua, be, being, being the chairperson is probably one of the loneliest <laughs> jobs you have. Um, no, it's not like you can share, you can share um, some of these decisions. But I, 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 I do own that decision. And that was based upon a request that was made to me based upon an investigation. And I will tell you, I had to think about what was in the best interest of the department, including Sea Worm. Contrary to many of um, what we heard today, that many felt that that decision put at risk everything that Sea Worm has done, all the trust. I recognize that. I recognize that. But having Kaleo continue to be in that position would have put a cloud over Kaleo, would have put a cloud over everything that Sea Worm did. I recognize that some of you may disagree with that. But understand that that wasn't an, um, it wasn't 
an easy decision, but it was one that I shared with Kaleo. Um, and, you know, I also realize he has been a, in a tremendous amount of pain because he has not been able to say anything. And I appreciate you bringing to my attention the, the social media. Um, I think, um, like I said, I can, I can never imagine how difficult this has been for him, how painful it has been to be personally attacked and not be able to say anything. And, you, and Neil is right. Silence gets filled with a void. And that void is going to be filled with misinformation, and it creates that opportunity. But I think you need to appreciate the position that I'm in. There's an ongoing investigation. I have to be very careful about drawing that line. And people may not appreciate that, but that is, that is something that I have to consider. Um, you know, <coughs> Being the chairperson has been the best job. This has been my dream job. But it, all, it has also been the hardest job. My children have to call me every single day. Are you okay, mom? You all right? You, you know, you okay? Um, and I'm good. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I am so grateful for the opportunity to serve in this position. I truly am, but it is a very difficult position. Um, sometimes you have to make hard decisions that people do not agree with, I get it. And I've heard every single person who has spoken today. I've heard the concerns, I've heard the voices, I've heard the emotions, and I've heard the heartfelt um, plea to make it right. I want you to know that I'm going to take all of this. I've heard you. Nothing has been wasted on me. Um, so I, have, I thank all of you that took the time to stay here with us, to, to, present, to provide us information. Um, I recognize that something has to be done before October when we go back to, when we go to Maui. I don't know what that decision is going to be, but I recognize um, something needs to be done. So I'm hoping um, we are planning our next meeting to be on Maui. We had originally planned this meeting to be on Maui. And I will tell you, I greatly appreciated a letter that came from Kiamoku Kapu and Kapua, mahalo for letting, giving me the advance. Kiamoku Kapu, Archie Kalepa, and even Kekai, asking me not to hold the meeting on Maui, but to hold it. Now they could have raked me over the coals on social media and say, see how insensitive this, this chairperson. She goes to Lahaina and she, didn't she feel what we felt? But they didn't. They trusted enough to, act, to, to reach out to me to ask. That to me, I mean, I will tell you, when I received that, I wept because it was so significant that they could have taken a different route and they could have just said, see, look at her. She don't even, she don't even care. Um, so I am tremendously grateful for their reach out to me and to give and to make that personal plea. Because I know that they didn't have to do that, um, but they did. And we responded and they came in full force today. And I am grateful that they all came. They took time out and you're right. At a point in time when many of them have lost their homes, they've lost loved ones, they've lost their community, but they took time to be here because they knew how important it was. I mean, I get it. Presence is important. And I knew how important it was. And I heard their, their <coughs> overwhelming plea and cry to reinstate Kalia. I heard that. I heard that. Please know it has not gone on deaf ears. So I have great aloha for them 
for making that gesture and for physically being here. And I am grateful for all of you for staying as late as you have with us. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen in October, but I do recognize that um, there's an expectation that something will be done. So um, all I can say is I understand. I've heard everybody. Um, and um, mm. thank you. Thank you all for being here. And thank you for your courtesies to me and to the commission. Um, and I do, and, and I do firmly believe you know that this isn't easy. So again, thank you everybody. Mahalo for all of you who have stayed here and for the, for the sharing of, of the food and the sharing of your time, greatly appreciate it. So with that being said, I am going to adjourn this meeting. What time is it? Hey, yeah. Holy moly. 9.20, 9.20.